We began the Christmas weekend. And so from now to Sunday, Christmas Day, we, we are minded about Jesus Christ and his birth. And I just want to encourage you because Christmas falls uniquely this year on a Sunday. I just make it a point to be in church and, and join other Christians wherever they are and, and commemorate this important celebration of Christ and his place in our lives. Uh, let's go into the story in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. The birth of Jesus Christ occurred in very interesting times. It was at, at a moment in history where all kinds of things were happening, but within all the events of time and history, God was moving his hand and his purposes were being worked out. And so the passage says that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus. Uh, Caesar did not make that decree directly. It was made by his governor. And, but because the governor is under Caesar, uh, his actions are attributed to Caesar. So the governor uh, of the region that Jesus Christ uh, fell into uh, decreed that everybody needed to be back in their home base for registration, and this registration was not just a census of numbers, but also for taxation purposes. The Jews hated this because the Jews are in their homeland, but they are being governed by the Romans, and the Romans are calling the shots. So once in a while, you are told by the Romans to do something and move here and move there, and that's not something anybody wanted. And so this decree came at a very inconvenient time for the generality of the people in Judea but particularly for Mary and for Joseph because Mary is expecting her child and she is quite close to the time. So a decree went out. This is a political decree or a civic act, but within it we see the hand of the Lord. And what this passage teaches us clearly is that God rules over rulers. Mary and Joseph were not there in the council or the senate or whichever group was making this law. They were not there, uh, but the law was made. And, and the people who were making the law uh, thought probably they're just going to collect more money from the Jews, but they didn't know that God had a larger picture. So unknown to Mary and Joseph, unknown to the governor of Judea, the hand of the Lord was at work. God rules in the affairs of men. doesn't mean that he instigates everything and that he's directing everything, but he's able to orchestrate everything to center in his will so that what was meant to disrupt your life, God is able to bring it in alignment with his purposes for your life. So we don't go about creating opportunities for God. God watches the works of men and turns everything into his will. So there may be things happening to us at every point in time that are not palatable. And when you look at those things, you just feel, this is not good for me. And I'm sure that's what uh, Mary and Joseph felt. But God had a larger plan for their lives. Today, we can also rest assured that God has a larger plan for our lives. What was meant for evil, he will use it for good. What was supposed to be a stumbling block will become a stepping stone. What was designed to put you to shame, God will use it for your glory because he takes all the orchestrations of men, the machinations of men, and bring them in alliance to his greater purpose for your life. Whatever God wants to do for you will come to pass and no one can abort the purposes of God in your life. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, use the events of the times I live in to advance your purpose in my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I encourage you to be in church on Sunday with other Christians as we welcome at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Mesa Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.